Okay, this video is about a uh, restart of a 90 plus efficient furnace. There is an inducer at the bottom right of the picture. There are pressure switches that prove that the inducer came on on the left. The burners are right here underneath this cover. This cover would normally be on in operation. I've taken it off and you can see the burners inside. To the right there will be a hot surface igniter that is going to glow a yellow color. Uh, then the burners will come on. There's a flame sensing rod on the left side that will prove that the flame came on. And the unit will be cycled on. About 30 seconds after the burners come on, the circulating fan will come on. Now you can hear the inducer come on. There goes your hot surface igniter. Gas valve just came on. Burners have lit and proved. And now it's just waiting uh, the time period out for the heat exchanger to warm so that the circulating fan can come on and it will cycle normally. If for some reason we lost gas, in this case I'm just turning it off manually, the hot surface igniter comes right back on, the inducer continues to run to pull any unburned gas out of the heat exchanger, and we will attempt to relight. Okay, there's no relight, the gas valve has come on, but we did not prove flame, so it shut off the igniter, and it's going to do a purge, and then it's going to attempt to relight. Okay, there's your hot surface igniter coming back on. It's going to try again. It'll try a total of three times before it does a hard lockout. Hard lockout means it stays off for an hour. Then it's going to retry, and if it lights at that time, then everything's okay and it will continue to operate. If it doesn't relight, it'll go into hard lockout again and there will uh, wait another hour. Now let's try a couple of things uh, to see what happens if I disconnect a few things. I'm going to turn the gas valve back on I've disconnected the flame rod sensor. Now the gas valve is on so the unit should fire, but because it's not going to see any flame sense, it's going to shut down after a few seconds. There's your burners. Okay, there was no flame sense, so the unit shuts down. Here again, it's going to try three times, and then it's going to go into hard lockout. If we had a different problem, such as a hot surface igniter failure, it would do the same thing. I'll see if I can demonstrate that. Flame sensor is hooked back up. Hot surface igniter is disconnected. And there will be a light click when it decides to um, attempt to light. But the hot surface igniter will not come on. So you will not get flame, so the flame sense will not be sensed and it will not fire off. 
Now we're attempting to light with the hot surface igniter disconnected as you can see on the uh, right. Uh, it will not warm up. The gas valve will dump gas for a short time. Now the gas valve is letting gas in but it's not going to light so it shuts off and here again it's going to try three times uh, and then it's going to go into hard lockout. Now we're looking at the lower part of the uh, furnace. Notice the small round window about the center. That window shows me error codes on the IFC or integrated furnace control. If this furnace fails to light, it will blink a code. There could be codes for uh, no flame sense, uh, pressure switch problems, and a number of other things. But if I want to know why the furnace is not running, I look through the window and I can see the code. If I pull that bottom cover off before I look for the code, it kills the power from the door switch and I will lose the codes. So it's important not to pull that panel off if you have a failure. Look through there, see what the code reads, record it, and in this case it is marked on the uh, uh, IFC control. I'm going to pull that panel off now. You can see the uh, IFC centrally located under the bottom panel. That has diagnostic codes listed on it and that tells you why the furnace shut off. You can recycle this furnace by turning the power off and then turning it back on again and it will attempt to relight. 